Mystery Yarn Challenge Reveal, take two. Hey there, Soul Shines, it's Michelle here, and it is a Mystery Yarn Challenge. Um, so I'm doing this format a little different. I'm not quite sure what people think of it, if they like it, don't like it, whatever. Um, we'll see how it works. Uh, I'm going to do a reminder picture. Here's the yarn that I received. The challenge is to make something that includes all of the yarns. Some people like, like to make a lot of things. I have so many things going on and haven't really been doing much lately. So the fact that I got this done is amazing. Um, I'm going to show it to you and then for those of you who want to stick around you can watch some little tidbits as I talk a little bit about my progress kind of show little bits of where I was at. Um, I wanted to kind of share some of the behind the scenes of my creativity as I am coming up with this project. So be prepared. He is uh, disproportionate in the cutest way possible. <laughs> okay, so here he is, guys. Uh, his head, I love his head. I like seriously love his head. I think his arms turned out way cute. I don't like how long I made his body and his legs are so short. So short. Look at that cute little tail. So what I did for the tail is I used a fork um, I'm gonna link the tutorial down below, but let me tell you, I wrapped it around kind of a lot and I was like, I, this is way too big of a pom-pom. It's not working for me. I had challenges with cutting the things apart. So I was like, here you go, Hiram, have a ball wannabe. And then it fell apart on him. Sorry. Um, so then I made another one. I didn't put as much yarn in it cause I wanted it to stay kind of small and I cut it while it was still on the fork. And then I made sure it was tight and tied it on. I did not put a hole in this for it to stick through. I just stuck it on there. Cute little pockets. Um, they actually are pockets. You stick your fingers in. Where is it? There you go. Um, did a little cross thing. I left this open because I thought that was cute. The little farmer with his not cute and then a little bandana. So I did use all the yarns. Um, I have this peach color in his ears. Um, mostly he's orange. He's got the blue pants, the green, and then white for the two bits. Um, he was really fun to make. So if that's all you want to see, there you go. He's a reveal. If you want to see more of my process, stay tuned. I will tell you more about it. Okay, I'm going to put in a bunch of little videos and the little videos are just ones there I just took with my phone as I was going out throughout the day as I was working on it the different times throughout the month. And then I didn't video everything, so I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what I can remember right now that I haven't talked to you about. So here's the videos. So I wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about my process. I'm sorry about the wonky angle. Um, these are the yarns that I got for my, um, mystery yarn challenge. I have a mystery um, value acrylic. I have this thinner stuff from Kmart thinner yarn. And then I've got super soft big twist value and I've got this Bernat super soft white value and this older big twist um, mint colored. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, I'm not really sure what to make. Um, there's not like enough yarn. I mean, there kind of is to pay if you wanted to do like granny square clothes, but there's not a wearable amount, um, in my opinion. And honestly, some of this, I wouldn't want to put this in a wearable. It's just not my favorite yarn. So what am I going to do? This is what I'm thinking about. What can I do to make this work for me and I remembered that Easter 
is this month so I can make a fun little Easter thing. So this is my thoughts. If I use this it, um, as the main body, I can make a little bunny. I can make an amigurumi bunny. So I'm going to use this for the body and then I'm going to use this for like the inside of the ears. Um, I don't know if, if it's going to have a belly portion, you know, I could use that, whatever, I'm not sure. Um, I can make a little fluffy tail and um, possibly something like a shirt or something, I'm not really sure, but I was thinking these can make cute little pants for the guy, like my little bunny guy, and then this could either make some more clothes or I could do something together with the two for their clothes, or I could do, what was the other thought I had? A basket, make him a little Easter basket that he carries with him and stuff, so. Um, those are kind of my thoughts. We'll see how it goes as I move on. But I am going to start with this one, and um, I, when I get ready to actually do something with that, I will bring you guys back and we will go through the process and you can get a little idea into how I think about this, which may or may not be how other people who do amigurumi think about it. I really like watching um, Skein Spider, I think is her name. Her name is Leah. Um, no, it's not Leah. It's just Lee. I like watching Lee. I like watching... Um, Oh, another Australian person. Knots is in her her channel name, but I can't remember it right now, and I can't remember her name. But she always starts out with, hello, it's Thursday. That's how her video starts. So um, she's really fun, and they show a lot of their process for making amigurumi, and I've learned a lot from them, even though I've been making amigurumi since before I ever knew the word amigurumi. I was like, I'm just making a stuffy. I'm just making toys. Uh, and now I know that there's a name and really it's just like the word for toy in I think Japanese or something like that. I'm not sure Anyway, um, here's my face. It is here. Uh, I just couldn't get a great view I've got a bag This one that I'm just keeping the yarn in for now uh, It's project bag I call it a project bag. It's a project bag. I'm putting a project in it. It's a project bag and we'll be back, figure out what size crochet hook I want to use, which usually for amigurumi, I will go with, so this calls for an H, so I will probably do maybe a G, uh, maybe an F. It will, I will go smaller, so amigurumi, it's good to go a little smaller than what it's called for, or what your tension is, because you want it to be tight enough that the stuffing doesn't come out. So, anyway, that's it for this segment of Mystery Yarn Challenge. Okay, talking a little bit about my process. Um, I know that I'm making a head. Some people draw out their whole sketches. I wing it as I go. That's just the way I am. Um, I decided to start with five. Um, sometimes I'll start with six, but this time I start with five single crochets in a magic ring. And then I did increase in every single one. But I don't want to keep increasing at the same rate because I want my head to be, the top of my head to be a little bit on the cone shaped side. So I only put three increases in this row. And that meant trying to decide kind of like, I have an increase like here, and an increase here, and an increase here. Just kind of trying to guess where I want them to go. And I'm going to do another increase just three times, so I'll kind of figure where I want them to go. But also, I'm going to look like here's my increase here. I'm going to make sure that it is not on either one of those stitches. So I'll put it here or here, um, just to, so that I don't get the... I don't know. I just don't like increases to stack on each other. So that is my process. When I get a few out, then I will just do, so I'll keep, I'll say this again, I'll keep increasing by three for a few rounds. 
um, which will help to kind of pull it down more in a cone shape. Um, the head will be a little bit, not flat, but a little bit flatter um, instead of just directly going into a cone shape because I didn't want it to be like a claw. I want it to just have a little bit more of a funnel shape as it goes down. I hope that's making sense. Let's see, probably when it's about that wide. So when I'll just start doing a few rounds of just single crochet all the way around, that's when you'll really start to see the shape and I'll come back. I've done a couple of rounds. As you can see, um, it's kind of making a bowl shape. It's because um, I'm not increasing the same amount as I did in the beginning. When you have five or six and you increase, it's how you keep a flat circle. But I didn't want a flat circle. I wanted a bowl. I will do my a few rows of just plain single crochet to give it a little bit more length before I do the, my next step. And one thing that you get to know when you're designing amigurumi is it takes a lot of frogging sometimes. So far I haven't frogged. But if I don't get what I want in a couple of rows or when I get to my next phase, um, I may have to frog a few times. And that's okay. That's just the nature of designing things. Is work a bit, you like it or you don't like it, you keep going or you frog a little bit. Because that's just how designing things goes. And if you're not okay with frogging, designing amigurumi is not for you. Here we have this shape. Um, apparently I did a little more increases on one side because the shape has a little bit of a an evenness to it. But you know what? I can tell even by doing this that once it's stuffed, it will be fine. Now, some people would just make an egg shape and then put the stuff on. I want to play around with my increases, so I do want to increase this a little bit. And I want to try to see if I can put a little bit more increases in the front to see if I can get the shape that I'm looking for. And if I can't, I'll just undo it and that's fine. So you can see the back side stayed flat. Just kept moving up. I worked out to where I was kind of at the sides and then I did a few re increases and then the next time I came and I worked not quite as far, did an increase, worked straight across all the front stuff, did an increase on the other side but I haven't done any increases on the back. So that keeps the back moving down straight but as you can see from the side here the front gets a little lift and it gets kind of puffed out. And that is what I wanted to get. And now I think for, um, cause I do want it to go out everywhere. Now I'm gonna go, I have 25 stitches around. I'm gonna increase by five for at least one round, maybe two. We have a funky little shape here. But as you can see, because I only did those one, couple rows of increases on the front, the back doesn't have as much going out. I'm also working in the spiral method. Um, so the next step is I'm going to do one or two rows with just single crochets around and then I'm going to start decreasing to round off my body or my head and I'm just going to decrease it in the um, I'm working in, in sets of five right now and I'm going to just decrease it in sets of five until it gets down to five, close it off, and that will be it. This is my safety eyes. I realize before I go too much further, if I'm going to put safety eyes on this thing, I need to put them on while I can still reach up inside. So we have orange, and then that would be kind of creepy, I think. These are the color I think they are. Kind of yellowish. I guess they wouldn't be too creepy. So I've got a yellowish eye. I think these ones are 
brown on the edge. So brown eye, a very green eye. I don't know if these are the small, I think these ones are smaller. Definitely want smaller eyes. So we've got two sizes here. I think the green is the easiest to see, so I'm going to hold up both if I can. My storage keeps telling me it's low. I need to clear out my phone. So because of how small I'm making the head, I definitely need the smaller ones. Although it's really fun to put two different sized eyes on things. I kind of like the green. Um, these ones here have clear on the outside. Um, blue could be kind of fun too. And you know, I could do different colored eyes, but I don't think I'm going to. And then I've got some, like this is a nose. I'm not going to use the nose. Although I could use the nose. Um, bunny shape. A little make a bunny nose. That would be cute. And then I have some that are just like round circles that I could do for eyes. But I'm going to use one of the colors. Green or brown. Green or blue, I mean. Oh, which color do I want? Do I want him to have green eyes or blue eyes? Green eyes or blue eyes? And no hair. I really like the green ones. I think we're going to go with green. Green eyes. So I'll get two of the small ones. And then, um... I just bought these a while back off of the the um, Amazon. I don't know. It's just safety eyes. And this one had safety nose. So I haven't decided if I want to put a nose in or not. Probably put a nose in on a different level. And then I've got to figure out which size backs to get. Okay, so um, one of the things that I did was... I would take the eyes and just place them in different holes until I got it to a place that I think I like. Um, I hope I like it because once they're in, they're in. Um, he's not closed yet. I have two more decrease rounds to go. Um, but I want to stuff him while I can still reach inside. Bef um, after I did the eyes and before I moved on, I secured the end for my magic circle and I just left it hanging inside of there it's just gonna add stuffing inside of there um, the next step before I close this off and I just have to say it would be so easy to just say oh he looks like a cute little bug or um, turtle or other shape like you start getting this and it's like oh he could be so many things but um, I am set on him being a bunny so I will work on that, but oh, not just cute. I love how the yarn does its own little thing. But when we stuff it, it will change shapes. I could stuff it so it's entirely round, or when stuffing it, I can kind of squish it together like this, so it's a little flatter this way. Um, so we're gonna kind of play with that. You can play with shaping while you're stuffing within. A reason so some of your shaping comes from increases and decreases and some of your shaping can come from how you stuff it because like I could make him completely round like that or I could make him a little bit flatter we'll see as I get there the other thing is as I'm gonna go find my batting and I put a thin layer that kind of um, goes right along the inside of the thing and then I have my bag of yarn scraps right here. I put the f thin layer of white stuffing so that um, no yarn colors will poke through if I have any holes or a little bit looser spots like where de increases or decreases are. Um, but then my main stuffing is going to be the scraps because that's a great way to use up scraps. Okay, here we go. Finished, stuffed. Pretty sure I said batting when I meant polyfill. Um, as you can see, stuffing him, I could kind of scrunch him a little bit to how I want him to be. Um, I really, I think he's cute. He could turn into a turtle, like a cartoon turtle, 
if I wanted him to, that would actually be super cute. But I'm going for bunny. So um, I think the next thing I want to do is create his little uh, puffy white cheek thing with a nose. Not 100% sure how I'm going to do it. I have ideas on aspects of it. So I'll think about that over the next um, few hours. I don't know if I'll get back to this today, but I will let you know what I've come up with. Some people wait to attach everything when they're all done with all the parts, but I kind of plan as I go and make it up as I go. So um, I will do his nose stuff, attach his nose stuff, and then make his ears and I'll make both ears but then attach both of his ears and then I will move on to figuring out his body and that's just kind of my process but everybody has their own process and as you just learn from different people and then figure out what you want if this is something you're actually interested in creating your own I made this to go on his face it will look very cute once it's on there um, this is one of those things where I had to frog it. I had made one without doing any kind of row in the middle. And then it just didn't look quite right at this time. And so then I just put a row that had one single crochet in the middle. Then I did a puff stitch on this side. And then I did a puff stitch on this side. And then we I mean, see this looks kind of funny down here. I'm going to use one of my yarn tails to kind of scrunch that up in when I sew this on. So that's the next step. I'm going to attach that and come back. Okay, so the cool kids would have used pins to pin it in place. I did not. Um, I might for his ears. I decided to give him a couple little teeth down there just while I was going around. That was fun. So... Oh, his nose is, I don't know if I can fix his nose or if it's too tight in there. It's a little turned. Yeah, that's a lot better. So, he looks kind of silly right now, but as soon as he's got ears on, he'll read bunny and I love it. Well, let me share a challenge I have with you. So, I've got my big twist that's the same as this. And then I've got this stuff over here that I'm going to use. This is not the same crochet hook. This is an F. I'd have to look back through videos, but I'm pretty sure I might have, I don't know what size I used. I'm going to go check. If I used an F, then I can just keep going. For the ears, it won't matter. For the puffy cheek thingies, it didn't matter. But when I do the body, I want to use the same size hook as I used for his head. So this is what it looks going back and forth, and I know I'm not going to use this. I don't like my bumpy sides. Just don't think it looks much like an ear. Can bring him back over. It's not like a horrible ear, but I know I can do better. So this one, I'm not going to use either of these, but this one here is a little closer to what I want. I did a chain. I did a slip stitch and some single crochets and did down I'm going to redo it I wanted a little taller so that the main part of it is this little bit fatter stuff and then I have to remember exactly how many I did because I have to do the same thing with this one um, but this is a part of making amigurumis and designing them is try something don't like what you do start over again so I made it a little taller, which is okay, but I wish that all, most of it was this fat stuff. So what I'm going to do is do it again, only do my little increase stuff right at the very top and then most of this as things. Plus, although it's, I don't know, I have to decide if I want it that tall. So how this will be take four. Alrighty, oh my gosh, look at how cute that is. So probably this will face this way. Because I am making the other color to put together with it. And so that will be the side that shows on the back. But oh my gosh, now I've got to make another one in this color. And then I'm going to make 
I'm going to see how, because the yarns have different textures, I'm going to see how oh, it just works up if I just do the same exact thing. Um, if it goes just tiny smaller than this, then perfect. If it doesn't, I'll do one less double crochet down here and um, so that it just sits slightly shorter and it will work. Um, so let me make another one and come back with the light peach. Old acrylic. Okay, I don't love the feel of this. It's like the scratchy acrylic and this is the super soft big twist. Uh, oh well. Okay, so they come up. I didn't do all of the things so it's a little bit shorter, but they come up together. I'm going to undo this. I'm going to do one last chain up and then I'm going to do half doubles. So the way that this is done is I chained my, I did 13, but you can chain however many you want. I did a slip stitch and I worked in the back loop so they would both have this same kind of edge. But I slip stitched, then I single crocheted, then I half double crocheted, then I double crocheted the rest of the way down. So I'm going to undo this. I'm going to chain 12. I'm going to single or slip stitch, single, half, and then I'm just going to do half doubles. And that should fit it so it just fits just inside the thing here. But I may have to go down to like 11 and do it so that it comes even more down in there. I don't know. We'll see. That's one of the things about this is it's experimenting upon the yarn. Um, I've got my things here. So um, one thing I know, I tend to leave long tails on everything. So like I have long tails on my orange because honestly I probably have way longer tails than I need. But I don't know what I need. But I do know on this one I need the same color or is it this one? See, that's the thing is I don't know which one I need to do my attaching. <laughs> but I will put these back, if I can get the right ones here. I've got so many yarn tails. Put these back to back. Sew them up together. And I'm not sure if I need this orange tail or this orange tail, the lighter orange. But we'll sew those up together. And then I will attach them to the head. Now this time I might actually use pins like the cool kids to pin them in just to kind of get them more even. I don't know. You know what I'm so excited about? As soon as these ears are done, I don't have to use this yarn ever again. I don't like working with the old acrylic. I just It's kind of scratchy and stuff. And then being working with Big Twist at the same time is just not fair. I'll look, hello. There's my mangy dog that needs a desperate haircut. So I did end up cutting, let me show you, all the ends off of these because I realized I needed the orange stuff to go up around um, to make a good edge around up here. And so this will just go in my stuffing. <sighs> so... What I am using pins this time to kind of get them where I want them. What I did to get this bend in his ear is I took one of my peach strings um, up in, wrapped it around somewhere, pulled it, and then I kind of just snugged it tight, but not too tight, till I could get the shape that I wanted. And then um, I will sew that on, and we will be ready to figure out his body. I'm so excited. He is so stinking cute. My next thing I'm going to do, and I'm not going to be doing it right now, but I wanted to talk about it, is it's time for this head to get a body. So I'm going to use this orange color still. I wish the color was coming up the color it is. It's a much more pinker orange. and I really like it. But um, anyway, so what I'm going to do is either start with five or six in a magic ring and I'm going to go out approximately how wide I think I want the body to be. And then I'm going to make a tube for a while. I don't know if I'm going to make them fatter or rounder. 
I haven't decided yet. And that's one of the things that happens when one is making their pattern up they go. Some people have all figured out and planned ahead and I go with figure it out as I go. So I know I don't want a ball, but do I want it to be similar to the head in that it came down and then went fatter and give him a little belly? Do I want it to have more of an egg shape? Or do I want it to be... Yeah, so you see some of the things I have to figure out. Alrighty, guys, this is cracks me up. It just looks like an Irish or a Russian nesting doll. Now, this is the top part of my body. Um, I was working along, and I was going to just make a whole almost egg-shaped like thing. Um, I got my circle to the size that I wanted it at the top, and then I worked my way down... And then I inc started increasing here. I did, I think, four increase rows. But instead of increasing by six, like I did up here, I increased them each by three. So that it had a more, a little more gentle of an increase than up here. Um, but as I was working along, I was like, how can I just make this process simple? And what would be the easiest thing? And I had the thought it was time to change colors. Um, so, I have two options now. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to go grab the blue that I'm going to use for his pants. And I'm either going to start the circle at the bottom and work up until I am basically just like, you know, the, the Easter eggs that they kind of slide on each other. I'm going to do that, or I could start up here, I think I'm going to do the bottom up thing, um, so that's what I'm going to do, and I'll stuff this, and I'll make the bottom and stuff it, and sew them together to make his little pants, I think that will be fun. Alrighty guys, I have my stuffing, and my yarn scraps, and I've got this guy. It looks like a nesting doll, <laughs> but I've used pins to help hold that on before I get ready to sew it on. So that is going to be his body all ready to go there, and then he'll have his head will get attached on eventually. And I did his short little stubby legs. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about his legs. I will probably also try pinning those on. Some people use more pins than I do. So how I did the feet, and I wanted to show you in the process, but life got pretty crazy. Right around this line right here, I did my single crochets in the front loop only so I left the back loop open and then I finished up another couple of rows and finished that off when I picked up the orange I went into those back loops I've left and I picked up the orange now I could have done his feet a little bit longer to stand out and it probably would look a little bit better but this is what he's got he's got these short little legs I have not made arms yet I'm gonna attach the body probably attach the legs so they don't go missing and the head just so I have a better idea of how he's going to look together. And then I will make him some arms. I still have this color that I haven't used yet. So I'm thinking about that. I also might make him like overall straps. I haven't decided. Ooh, if I did make him overall straps, I'd make him a little square and make bib, bib overalls. But I haven't decided that yet, and I haven't decided like if I'm going to make him a shirt, or like a little Easter basket to hold, or a bow, what I'm going to do with the green, but we're getting there, and Easter is a week ago, uh, so it's definitely not for this Easter, which is fine. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep him, or send him up to my grandkids. Now, I couldn't find, I wanted to find my, um... Oh, what do I call them? Like, like uh, I have glass, like the marble type, squished marble things that you'd put like in a glass bowl 
to at the bottom of a vase or something like I was trying to find those or small stones and I have no clue where they got put because those if you put them in the bottom and I always put a layer of stuffing over them but those will help weight it so it stands up now I didn't do this and his bottom's pretty flat so I think he'll be fine but who knows he may not stand up when he's all done um you know, there's a way to make his legs, uh, like, movable, but I don't know if I want to do that either. I think I'm just going to have them just sticking out, especially because they're so short. Trying to get this done, um, because today's the 8th, and I really would like to get this done today or tomorrow, so this is like my main focus for my yarn activities today. Okay, I know that I didn't talk about his arms. So to do his arms, I made my circles and then I did a couple of plain rounds. And then what I did was I did one decrease on a row and then I did a plain row. And then the next one I did one decrease and then I did a plain one. So that it would have a slow and gradual decrease up. And I really like how it turned out. Um, instead of closing up the top, I left it open um, I wish I would have stuffed them a little sooner because I got pretty tight at the top, but it's okay. Uh, they got stuffed and it's all good. Um, I When I attached it to the bunny, I made sure that I closed up so that there wasn't a hole. Um, so that's how I closed it up. I just, as I was attaching and I made sure both sides got closed and stuff. So um, that was one thing that I did for while we were gone. I already talked about I did the pom-pom with a fork. Um, his pockets, this one here, I started with two or three stitches to do kind of, I wanted to try to get that pocket shape. I don't think it turned out great, but I just figured I did a increase row, then a couple plain rows to get a, a little bit of a pocket shape. This one's just a rectangle and I sewed it on the three sides to leave it as a pocket shape. Um, when I did his um, overalls, see how this kind of has that top edge, the way I sewed it on? Um, I left that top edge and um, I took advantage of that. When I attached his bib, I um, single crocheted along that edge and just attached it right on and then um, single crochet back and forth till I had it as tall as I wanted to hit. Then on the one side, what I did was the foundation single crochet out until I kept doing that until it was long enough to attach it. That's how I did it. I think if I would have wanted to have these both attached, I might would have done um, just a chain until it was long enough, then single crocheted back and then gone across the top and then did a chain down the other side and back that way it would have been less sewing but I wanted it to have this cute little thing where he's just kind of falling apart when I did this one I attached it here did my single crochet foundation chain and then just kind of went around this so it would hold right there in the back for that cross um, and then for his um, his scarf thing. First of all, this is not actually attached. So if I can figure out where I tied it, I can untie it here. And I'll tell you what I did. Okay, first of all, it's just folded over here. Um, I did, I started here and I did um, a couple of stitches in that first place. And then I just increased on both sides as I went up the sides. When I got it to where it was almost touching around his neck how I'd want it to, so if I come around here you can see it touches, I had it almost touching. And then what I did was chained out on one side, single crocheted back, single crocheted all across the top, and then did the foundation single crochet out the other side. That way my um, ties come out at the same length on both sides. Um, whereas if you just did the chain and single crochet back, it actually ends up in the wrong place. Um, so I just fold it over and tie it on him because it's cute little detail. 
So he was a lot of fun to make. Um, because of the tail, I don't feel comfortable sending these up to my grandkids. I, it's just like not super tight on there and everything. If a kid were to play with that, they would end up with yarn coming out and that would be sad. So um, my daughter thinks that he's absolutely adorable and um, so I'm just gonna give him to her. Like I said, if I were to do this again, I would make his body shorter. I loved how his head turned out so I would not change anything about his head. Um, I loved how his arms turned out. I would have made his body shorter and probably his legs a little bit longer. Um, probably to match. I don't know. I would have made them different. I might would have also made them more like this so that they were not so weird here. I don't know. I'm not sure how I'd do it different, but I would do some differences there. Anyway, that is my mystery yarn challenge. Remember to let your light shine through your creations, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!